Hi! Today I got something different for you. The template template. A template to create templates. Sort of sounds like a nursery rhyme. I got this idea a while back and I just had to make it a reality. I like to create different templates for different workflows and genres. And I noticed that some things never changed when I made a new template from my previous ones. So I thought I might as well create a template for making templates. I'm sure some of you are in the same boat as me. But if not, if you haven't created a template before in FL Studio, maybe this is the perfect opportunity for you to create your first one. You can get this template alongside all my other freebies in the file section of the description down below. In this video, I'll show you how I intend for this template to be used, but of course, you're free to do whatever you want with it. So here it is, in all its glory. Seems pretty bland and simple, right? Well, don't worry, we are going to spice it up. And there is more to it than meets the eye. The first thing you'll notice is that there are four groups, one with 20 tracks and three with 10 tracks, all routed to the respective buses. If we go to the playlist, we'll see the same layout here. The cool thing is, they are all audio tracks linked to the mixer, which makes it easy to change the names and color. So if I change the name and color of this track, the changes will be mirrored in the mixer as well. And that's the big idea with this template, to make it very quick to label tracks and groups. There are also some send tracks here. If you don't want them, you just need to select them and select dock to and middle. But you know, you can also just hide the panel by clicking here. All right, now let's try to make our own template with this template. <laughs> I'll start by naming my first group. I tend to use a lot of drums in my production, so I'll use group one for that. I'm going to give it a darkish color. And now, if I just right click it and choose auto color group, the entire group will get that color. And this will of course be mirrored in the mixer as well. Neat. Personally, I like to lay out my drums in the playlist as audio, so I would use audio tracks for this group anyways, but it does not really matter. If you want to put down a MIDI clip on an audio track, you can do that without any problems at all. But if you for whatever reason want to change them to normal tracks, you can do that by right clicking them and select track mode and unassigned. You can also do it in a mixer by right clicking them and select unassign from audio track. Unfortunately, you can't unassign multiple ones at the same time for some reason, so that's a little cumbersome. If you unassign them, you can't change the name both in the playlist and mixer simultaneously, so I'll just leave most of the tracks as audio tracks for the flexibility it gives me. And as I said, it doesn't really matter. Next, I'll just add some labels here for things I always use. One for kick, one for snare, hi-hats, crash. Nice. Maybe I'll give them some cute symbols as well. Oh yeah, we are getting somewhere. The next thing I want to do is to create a group for synths. So I label my group accordingly and give it a pretty color. Here I want to add some instrument tracks. So I should change the track mode before doing anything else because it will just overwrite everything else I do. I know for a fact that I want at least three instances of Serum, so let's change the track modes. Choose instrument track and find Serum. I don't get the opportunity to choose where it goes unfortunately, it just goes straight to the next available mixer track. So you have to manually move the instrument tracks to your group and route them. But from here, they work just like audio tracks. Any changes you make gets mirrored. It also comes with the added benefit that you can open the plugin directly from the playlist. Neat! With all the serums set up and ready to go, I'll auto-color the group and give them some names. And again, there's no problem with leaving the tracks as audio tracks. If you want to add more synths when you use your template later, you can just add them the normal way by adding them from the menu into your channel rack. Then you can just route it to whatever track you want. And you still have that nice flexibility of changing the name both in the mixer and playlist simultaneously. The only caveat is that unlike instrument tracks, it won't automatically change the name in the channel rack. You'll have to do that manually. All right, next I'll add groups for bass and effects. So just as before, I'll name the groups and give them some pretty colors and then auto color the entire groups. But then what if I need more groups? Well, no problem. To add a new group, you just choose an empty track in the playlist, make it an audio track and link it wherever you want it. I want 10 tracks in my group, so I'll put it on 68. Then group the number of tracks you want to it by clicking group with above track and make them audio tracks. Then in the mixer, we'll click create group to add separators and route all the tracks to it. And there you go. 
this is basically how I made these templates. Next, let's set up the sand tracks. And again, if you don't want them, just either hide them or select them all and choose dock to middle. But if you want more sand tracks, you can similarly select some unused mixer tracks and dock them to right. I wrote all the new sand tracks to this return bus here. The purpose of this group is to process all our effects simultaneously. For the most part, this means side chaining and cutting the lows and highs with an EQ, but you can get creative with it. For this example, I'll add two reverbs and two delays. So a long reverb, a short reverb, a long delay and a short delay. Make sure that mix and or wetness knobs are turned all the way up so we don't double up on any dry signal. On the return channel, as I said was the common thing, I'll cut the lows and highs and add kickstart for side chaining. From here, it's all about preference and what you're planning to do with the template. For me, I will set up something for the side chain and make some subgroups before I call it finished. For the sidechain, I'll add a MIDI out that will work as a trigger for the kickstart. I'll just set the port to 1 and then I'll match that with the input port in the kickstart. In kickstart specifically, we also need to change the re-trigger option to one shot for this to properly work. Now whenever our MIDI out is playing, the sidechain will trigger. So now we can just layer it with our kick and snare for example. I know a lot of people like to add just one sidechain for their entire project, but I like to at least have one for each group that needs it. I just like the extra control it gives me. And I often want less sidechain on my weaker instruments like pads and more sidechain on my bass, for example. But on the other side of the spectrum, I think it's way overkill with a sidechain on each individual instrument. You don't need that. I used to do that and it just made my project a mess and ate up a lot of my CPU. Another thing I like to do is to add a subgroup for my percussion before it goes to the drums. This way I can sidechain only the percussion and let the kick and snare go straight through to the main bus. And that's it! We got ourselves a simple template. I hope you have fun with this. Feel free to send me the templates you create with this. I would love to see what you guys come up with and what sort of workflow you like to set up for yourselves. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. Before you click off, if this helped you out, do give it a like and subscribe to my channel and I promise to bless your feed with great FL Studio content. If you want to support me and what I do, you can join my Patreon at patreon.com slash soundsage. Link is in the description down below. See ya!